Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at implementing some of these features like a top five list, a sh list of short reads, maybe some shorter posts on your, your blog page, and some specific posts by, you know, putting in a specific query for some, some stuff that we're looking at. And the thing that all of these have in common is that they're running through something in Rails called a scope. And what this allows you to do is effectively create a method in your model, or if you call it, it will run a specific SQL query. So you know how you have those cases where you order a title or order like your posts by the created at descending to get the newest posts. Well, instead of having to write that same SQL query in you know 20 different places, you can just put it inside your post model to access it. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. So to get started, we're just gonna create a new Rails app. I'm gonna call my video, go ahead and run that with the default stuff. Uh, and thankfully, this is actually a very easy, you know, thing to implement without uh, without really even, you know, trying. Uh, the hard part ultimately becomes like where where do you draw the lines with how many of these you want to create, and I guess how creative you want to get while you're making them. So I'm gonna go ahead and CD into my video app as soon as I figure out how to press buttons on a keyboard, and I'm gonna do a code dot to open this up in VS Code. So the actual process here we're gonna go through is just create a scaffold for some posts. We'll then generate some fake data and then we'll go ahead and we'll query it. So we can go ahead and do a bundle add for the faker gem that'll let us make our fake data. After we do that, we can then go ahead and run a uh, Rails G scaffold post. We'll give each post a title and a body of type text and some views of type integer. Go ahead and run that. We'll then want to generate a controller, call it pages and give it a home action. You'll see why in a second. You can then go ahead and run a Rails S. It'll tell us we have to migrate our database, but we can just press the run pending migrations button. And then let's come into our config and our routes.rb to changes get to a root and the slash to a hash. At this point, we have the home page of our application figured out. So that's pretty cool. We now want to come into our DB folder, our Rails DB seeds, because we now have that faker gem, we can go ahead and create some fake data. To get started with this, what we want to do is just do a 10.times do, and then in here we want to call post.create. We can come down here, close this, and then we can type end right here, and now we can figure out what we want to put in this uh, fake data. To start with, we want to grab the title. We want to make sure that the title uses the faker gem, and then from inside of faker, we can call lorem.sentence and pass in a word count of three, which will give us three sentences. We can then pass in a body, do something similar, but here, uh, instead of a word count of three, we can do a sentence count of 10. And then for the views, we'll just do uh, a random number within the range of like a, a hundred or a thousand. So that just gives us some, some sample data. Now, if we stop the server and run a rails db colon seed command, that will add that data to our database. And then we can go ahead and run a rails s to start it up again. At this point, we can go ahead and refresh. And you'll see nothing really changed. If we come over to slash posts, you'll see that we have some of our fake data here. So we have a bunch of posts that have some random amount of views with no real rhyme or reason, titles and bodies that we can definitely put to good use. Now, what I'm gonna do is create one new post and I'm gonna call this one test, give it a body of case and give it like 123 views. The reason why I'm doing this is so we can see uh, what happens if we have a really short post. And you'll see how we check that in a minute here. So it, what we can do now is we can come over to our controllers and our pages controller. And in here is where we want to sort of have this magic happen. So ideally on the home page, I wanna have a method where maybe I get the uh, top three most viewed posts, right? So the way that we would traditionally do this is we would say something like, all right, I want to have at, uh, at top three equal the post dot where, uh, and then we want to do something like, uh, where the, uh, or maybe we want to do post dot order by the views as descending and then we want to dot limit three, something like that. And this works fine. The issue becomes what happens if on our post page, so maybe our post controller, the index page also has a uh, at top three, and this needs to now be equal to that same line of code. 
you can see where the issue happens where the more you chain these together the more sophisticated this gets uh, you'll quickly run into an issue where you're refactoring in multiple places like maybe we want to change this to top five we can do that you can rename that to top five but then we also have to come over to the, the pages controller and rename this to top five that's kind of a pain so instead what we can do is we can just get rid of this uh, and we can come back to our pages and we'll just call a method on our post and we'll say, uh, I don't know, we can call this uh, get top three posts or something, something like that. And now we can come over to our explore, our models and our post.rb. And then inside of our post.rb, we can do a scope with a space, colon, get top three posts and GitHub Copilot's already here to help. We pass in this little arrow after the comma and then inside of braces, we just insert our query. This now allows us to call this method and it works just like a method would. The only difference is this guarantees you're getting a query back. Uh, whereas a method might return, I don't know, the number 42 for no reason at all. So now that we have this, let's come into our pages in our homepage and let's just uh, implement something real quick to check this out. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this over. We're gonna have a, I changed this to a top three, and we're gonna say for each of the, what did I call this? The, uh, let's say this is the most viewed. That might be a better way of doing this. For each of the most viewed, we want to uh, do a P tag. And instead of doing a link to the post title, or instead of just doing the post title, we're gonna do a link to the post title, and then we're just gonna pass in the post. And then we can go ahead and end this. I'll tab this over, save this, and now if we come over to our homepage, we can refresh, and you can see we get those top three posts. So that's pretty cool. How could we do this with like our, our body length, right? Because in our localhost port 3000 slash posts, we have all these long posts, but I said we want to grab this short one, right? So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's create another scope in our post. We're going to say this one is a scope, uh, which we'll call a short read. And we'll define a short read to be where the length of the body uh, is, oops, is less than 100, something like that. Pretty arbitrary. The point is just to show you how this works, not really what, what you would want in an actual application. We'll call this at short reads. And then on our homepage, we can go ahead and we can insert a BR. That gives us some some space. We can then do a uh, short reads for an H3. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll grab the uh, at short reads dot each, do post. We'll say a link to the post title and then the post itself. Go ahead and save that. And here you can see we only have one short read because we've only made one post that has, uh, you know, a, a body of, of such a short length. And now finally, let's take a look at what happens if we want to pass in an argument into one of these uh, scopes. So passing in an argument is really not too t too difficult. All we have to do is say, uh, we'll call this like at specific posts is equal to a post dot. And let's do like a where title contains and then we'll do, ju let's just do the word test for now. So where the title contains test. So let's come back over to our post model, do another scope. We'll say uh, where title contains, title contains. And then instead of just having this arrow, we now have a set of parentheses here, and this is where we pass in our arguments. So we pass this in, we say where the title is like, and you'll have to change this like for an I like if you're in Postgres. So it, uh, it is like in uh, SQLite and I like in Postgres, something like that comma, and then right here we have our parentheses with the title inside. And all the parentheses do, uh, or all the parentheses, all the percent signs or the modulus symbols do, uh, is just, uh, it's a wildcard character. So you can think of it like uh, if you put the, the letter I in here to search for title, let's say you do like percent I percent will return the word title because title, because title contains I. Just something like that. So all we're doing is we're just checking for anything that has the word that we are looking for, or the letters that we are looking for in the word. So we can go ahead and save that, come back over to our homepage. And now that we have this, we can do another ER. We can then come down here and do another H3. 
we'll say this is the specific posts. You can come down here and let me just grab this snippet of code so we don't have to sit here and suffer through me trying to type. Go ahead and save that. Come over here, refresh the page, scroll down, and there's our specific posts. We can, of course, come back to our pages controller and change this for something like the letters E and R, maybe. We'll get everything that has an ER in it. We can see here we have two posts that have an ER inside of them somewhere in the title specifically. But yeah, this is kind of all I wanted to talk about. Just a quick way to uh, scope out your, your queries a bit more, make everything a little bit easier to manage. Uh, hopefully you can see why this is a better alternative to uh, manually writing all these queries. I just tend to manually write them in the tutorials because it's easier for uh, for me to make the videos uh, if I have all of the, the content just on the screen right there without having to jump all over. Uh, and it's easier for, for the viewer uh, if they don't have to, you know, go learn 20 different topics to follow along with the tutorial. And now that you know about scopes, if you see me writing a bad scope, scope you can just go write your own real quick. That hopefully works uh, far better than what I've written. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully I'll uh, see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.